You may not own a small business, but I can almost guarantee that you know someone who does. And if you think about that small business, I can also almost guarantee that there's probably one person that's sitting behind a computer that keeps that entire shop running, whether it's an electrical contractor or a plumber or auto body repair, there's one person that that business would absolutely fall apart if they weren't there. And once again, even if you don't own a small business, but you know somebody who does, I encourage you to watch this entire video and share it with somebody who might benefit from it. This is Fred. Fred's a plumber. That's all Fred knows how to do. He's been a plumber his entire life. He doesn't know anything about computers. That's why he hired Angie, his sister-in-law, to work for him. Run the front desk and just make sure that everything runs smoothly, cut payroll checks, and deal with customers. And Angie's been with them for a long, long time. She's a family member. She knows the business. And for the most part, she's pretty happy. But over the years, Angie has felt a lot of discontent about the job. And she went from happily helping out around the business to being really angry and resentful of this job that she's got. So one day she just walks out the door. I quit. I don't care anymore. Good luck. The problem here is twofold. One, Angie didn't do a good job of letting her boss, her brother-in-law, know what was going on, have access to everything that he needs. And secondly, Fred, who again is just a plumber, didn't think ahead to say, what happens if something happens to Angie and she decides to quit? What do I do? Believe it or not, this situation actually just happened to a client of mine today. And even though hiring family members or longtime friends is usually a pretty good idea because you already know and trust them, you also don't know what people are going through on a daily basis and you may not have any idea that there's a problem. And if your job is just to run the business, in this case, just to plumb, you're not going to have any clue that Angie has a problem. And if Angie has basically full control of the business, including payroll and all of your usernames and passwords and all of that stuff, if she walks out the door, you're in trouble. Not to mention, if she potentially wanted to get back at you, she has literally everything she needs to hold your business hostage and instead of going out and getting new plumbing jobs, now you're having to deal with this potential blackmail situation. At best, Angie just locked the computer and you don't have the password so you can't get into it. At worst, she's managed to go in and log into all of your banking and anything that has to do with your money, change passwords, transfer money anywhere they want, anything like that. If Angie had access to your QuickBooks data entry, she could hold that hostage. The bigger question here is, what are you doing as a business owner to protect what you have built? So in this video today, I'm going to give you a couple ideas that I think would really help you as a small business owner, just in case you have an employee that decides to fly the coop. Your biggest problem will be finding a replacement because there will be zero danger for you once that person walks out the door. And again, this may not be something that's of particular interest to you, but whether you have a family member that runs a small business or your buddy down at the coffee shop has a little screen printing business or your other buddy is an auto mechanic, small business is the backbone of this country. And without it, people could literally lose everything that they have. So if you know somebody like that, make sure you click on share and send this video to them because there may be a lot of things in here that they didn't think of that are very simple to do that could protect them in case something like this happens. Now, I know as a business owner, it may be hard to look at your sister-in-law or a longtime friend and kind of give them the impression that you don't trust them, but this is your business. You built it. You've worked and slaved to build this business. You should protect it. And personally, I come from the Nick Fury school of trusting people. Last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. I don't care who you are. I don't trust you. And that's a good way to make sure that your assets are covered anytime something like this might happen to you. The very first thing I would do is to protect your login information. And the reason for this is because if someone has full control to your visa bill or your QuickBooks login or your banking or any of that stuff, if you don't know the password, it is going to be an absolute nightmare to try to figure out how to get back into that online banking or whatever. And if you know the password, it's no big deal. You can log right in and change it. And that guarantees that you lock Angie out of any access to your money. So the easiest way to make sure of this is to make sure that the web browser that is being used on that front office computer is also being used by you, or at least gives you access to it and synchronize the account on both machines. 
That way, if a password gets updated on one browser, it's going to automatically synchronize to the other browser. And so worst case scenario, you can log into your browser and have the new password, whatever that was changed to. And if you're leery of saving passwords on your web browser, that's fine. In that case, I would just simply create a spreadsheet that lists all the important money related things, whether it's your bank account or vendor information. And this spreadsheet will keep your usernames and passwords updated and just make sure that the person who works at the front desk, if they change a password, that spreadsheet gets updated and states what day was updated and by whom and keep a copy of that spreadsheet at all times. If nothing else, the person that's working at that front desk is going to know that you're hyper aware of protecting your business and they're less likely to try to do something to hurt it. The second thing I would do, especially for companies who use data management software like QuickBooks or Quicken and routinely back up their data to a flash drive is to not allow that flash drive to stay connected to that company machine. That basically gives the person who works up front full control. What they should do is back up to that flash drive and then turn around and hand it to you, the boss, who then turns around and puts that company flash drive with all your personal data, all your income and expenses, put it into a safe in your office. Then when they need to go back up those company files again, they can come to you, ask you for the flash drive, plug it in, back up the data, turn around and hand it right back to you. Again, that establishes with that employee that you are fully in control of your company assets and it establishes a pattern. And if for some reason they decide they wanted to walk away from the business, they can't just pull that flash drive out, walk out the door, and before you even realize it's gone, they have access to all of your QuickBooks information. The third thing I would do is if that front office computer is locked behind a password, make sure that you as the boss know what that password is at all times. Now there's nothing wrong with having a password and that's probably a good idea, but it doesn't do you any good if you can't get into it. So make sure you keep up with that password if it does get changed. And when your new employee goes to lunch one day, go try to log into it. If the password's good, you'll be able to log in. No problem. But if for some reason the password has changed, that could be an indicator that maybe there's something else going on and that that person needs to communicate with you anytime they change the password. I know that sounds kind of silly and basic, but it does happen. I've gone on many calls where I've been asked to change the password on a machine and the owner of the business had no idea how to log into that computer. Whether they needed to log in to do anything technical or not, they still need to be able to access that computer because it's their computer and the owner of the business should always know how to log into any machine that's in their building. Now, one other thing I would recommend in that regard is if you haven't done that, there are ways to bypass that password. I've actually made several videos on how to do that. I'll link those up at the top for you, but it's also much easier just to make sure you know the password and routinely test it to make sure that your employees are on the up and up. So you might be wondering what actually happened on this service call. Now, thankfully, this was an amicable walkout. In other words, there wasn't any malicious intent. The information that I received originally was more of a panic. Oh my God, what are we going to do kind of thing? We're completely locked out. Turns out it wasn't like that at all. After reviewing everything on site, I advised the client exactly what I just told you. And going forward, we're going to implement steps to prevent that potentially from happening. As long as you understand that if you don't take any of these best practices when it comes to trusting someone to effectively run your business, you are asking for trouble. So I hope some of this information was helpful for you. As I said earlier, if this is not specifically for you, think about somebody you know who might actually benefit from some of these in their small business and please do share that. And if you have a story to share, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you about it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.